Hi, welcome to this first session in my class on accounting. Now, when I look at accounting from the outside, and many accountants will disagree with me, I think it's a role of accounting to first check transactions and make sure that the transactions that are being recorded actually happened, to record those transactions in a consistent manner, and then to report them in ways that we can understand what's being reported. I don't think it's a role of accountants to forecast the future or value businesses or assets. And as I said, many accountants disagree with me on this. Bluntly put, I think accountants are historians. Their job is to record what's already occurred, not predict the future. So I'm going to take that perspective and think about the three big questions that I want accounting statements to answer for me. And as we go through these statements, you can decide for yourself whether they do a good job an average job or a bad job in answering these questions. When I look at any business, small or large, public or private, here are the three questions I need answers to. First, what do you own? As a business, what do you own? What are your assets and what, you know, when did you buy them? How much are they worth now? Second, what do you owe? After all, as a business, you might borrow money. I need to know how much you owe. Third, how much money did you make last year? Now, you can talk about this as earnings or cash flows, but basically I need to know whether you're a money-making business, a money-losing business, or a business that's just treading water. What do you own? What do you owe? How much money did you make? Simple questions, right? But questions that we need answers to. And there are three statements that accountants use to try to convey these answers. There might be others, but these are the three primary statements. The first is a balance sheet. A balance sheet done right should record what a company already owns and what it owes at that point in time. And because it reports what it owns and what it owes, it'll give you an estimate of what the equity or ownership stake in this business is worth at this point in time. That's a balance sheet. Then you've got an income statement. The objective in an income statement to answer the question, how much money did you make? Defined through the accounting perspective of accounting earnings. So in an income statement, you record what you did over a period what you sold, what it cost you, and how much money you made during the period. And finally, there's a statement of cash flows. At least on the face of it, the objective of a statement of cash flows is trivial. It's to explain why your cash balance changes over the year and by how much. But in reality, a statement of cash flows is a recording of cash in and cash out. How much cash you brought in as a business, how much cash went out, and what the difference is. Balance sheets, income statements, statements of cash flows. Now we're going to come back and take a deeper look at each of these, but let's at least get a big picture perspective and what's on each of these statements. Let's start with the balance sheet. You've got assets and you've got liabilities. On the asset side, broadly speaking, accountants categorize your assets first into fixed assets. In accounting terminology, often physical assets go in your land, building, equipment, machinery. Assets which have a life of many years, fixed assets. Then you've got current assets. Current assets have a shorter life, life less than a year. Inventory, accounts receivable, cash is sometimes thrown in here. Then you've got financial assets. These might be investments you made in other companies. Stocks or bonds that you might own as a company. Financial assets. And then, at least broadly speaking, you have intangible assets. Now, if you're not an accountant, you're saying that makes sense. You've got brand name and technology. As we will see, an accounting definition of intangible assets might be very different from your definition and my definition. It's the asset side of the balance sheet. On the liability side of the balance sheet, you've got current liabilities. Things you owe in less than a year. Accounts payable, supplier credit, debt that's coming due before the next year is up. And you've got long-term debt. Take the form of bank loans, corporate bonds. Then you've got other liabilities. These are things that accountants worry might hang over the firm. Pension fund obligations, healthcare obligations. Depending on where you are in the world, different things can show up here. And finally, of equity. Equity in a balance sheet becomes a plug variable. It explains the difference between assets and non-equity liabilities. The balance sheet's objective is to show what you own and what you owe at a point in time. Let's move on to the income statement. Income statements generally start with revenues. What do you get when you sell the products or service you have as a company? 
From that, you net out the cost of goods sold. These are the costs directly associated with producing the products and services you sell. You get gross profit. Gross profit measures the profitability of overall production, what you've sold as products and services. But you might have other operating expenses that are not directly related to producing those products or services, but indirectly they need to be there. Marketing expenses, general and administrative expenses. These are operating expenses not directly related to production, but they get subtracted out to get to operating profit. That measures the profitability of the overall business. From that, you subtract out financial expenses. Sounds fancy, but if you've borrowed money, you've got interest expenses, and you might have other financial expenses, you net them out, and then you mop up to the extent that you might have non-operating assets, investments in other companies, cash and marketable securities, the income from those show up below the operating profit line. You get a taxable income. In most parts of the world, you're going to get taxed on it. You pay your taxes, you get net income. We'll talk more about the accounting constructs that go into producing an income statement. But an income statement's objective is to answer the question, how much money did you make last year viewed with the accounting definition of making money, which is accounting earnings. And then you get to the statement of cash flows in many ways. And I'm going to repeat this statement as I go through this class. It is the most honest of the accounting statements. In what sense? Well, accounting rules can't change cash in and cash out. And broadly speaking, accounting statements of cash flows are broken into three groups. At the top, you usually get cash flow from operations. Starts with net income, but basically these are the cash flows associated with changes in working capital. And you add back any expenses you might have as a company that are non-cash. Don't want to be mysterious, but things like depreciation, amortization. So that's the first stop is to stop and ask, what are my cash flows from operations? Second stop in a statement of cash flows is to look at cash flows from investing. How much do you invest in capital expenditures, land, building, equipment, machinery? If you did acquisitions and you paid with cash, it's going to show up here. It's cash flows from investing. And you might even have side items like investing in financial assets. Cash flows from operations, cash flows from investing. Third and final stop is cash flows from financing. Broken into two groups, there's debt. Cash flows from debt will be new debt you raise. Cash flows to debt will be repayments of old debt, short term as well as long term. But you also have cash flows from and to equity. Cash flows from equity would be new stock you issue if you're a publicly traded company or new equity you raise as a private company. Cash flows to equity can take the form of dividends maybe even buybacks if you're a public company. Or if you're a private company, the cash you take out as the owner of the company. Cash flows from operations, cash flows from, from investing, cash flows from financing. One of the features of a statement of cash flows, and we'll come back and talk about this, is that cash flows preserve their signs. Positive cash flows are shown as pluses. Negative cash flows are shown as minuses. That's why I call it the most honest of the financial statements. Now, if you aggregate all those cash flows, you're going to get a change in your cash balance. Put broadly, if you have lots of cash flows from operations, you don't invest much and you don't give back much to debt holders, equity investors, your cash balance will go up. But if you have very low cash flows from operations, you're reinvesting a lot and you have lots of debt payments, your cash balance will go down. Income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flows. Now, these are not three independent statements because choices you make on one will affect the other. In what sense? What you show as depreciation and amortization is an expense in your income statement gets added back in your statement of cash flows. In fact, the statement of cash flows shows changes from year to year in the balance sheet. What do I mean by that? If you've invested more in fixed assets, your balance sheet will show the larger fixed assets, but the change in the fixed assets will show up as a capital expenditure in your cash flow statement. So what you see here are three statements that are interconnected. And to make sense of a company, you have to read all three statements and look for the interconnections. Now, along the way, you have to understand how accountants think. Accountants love rules. It's a rule-driven process. And over time, these rules have been formalized. And you can re read the accounting rules. Do it when you need to go to sleep quickly because they're incredibly boring and incredibly detailed. 
But there's a reason why they've been formalized. First is you need to standardize the process. So when I look at 10 companies, I'm not relearning accounting with each one. So I can compare across companies. The second is accounting has its own principles. Sometimes it violates its own principles and the rules are written to make sure those principles get followed. It's a rule driven process. And broadly speaking, there are two sets of rules you would see out there among most publicly traded companies. U.S. companies are governed by GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. They've been around a while. They get changed and adapted and modified over time. And most international companies are covered by IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards. Now, before we make a big deal about two accounting standards, I have to tell you, I've seen these two converge over time. They share a lot more in common than they're different. And much of the world is now under international accounting rules. 30 or 40 years ago, this was not true. Today, if you open up the financial statements for companies around the world, they share a lot more in common than they have as differences. There are parts of the world where you've got to be cautious. Accounting rules can be different. And there might be some accounting rules where there are differences across regions. But we are at a point in time where we have more in common than we have different. So the bottom line, the raw material that we need to do financial analysis comes almost always in the form of financial statements. Those financial statements are prepared by accountants. So you might not like to do it. I certainly don't. But you have to learn to think like accountants when you go through those accounting statements. I'm going to say something that sounds mean, but I mean it. Rather than ask, does this make sense? Ask yourself, does it make accounting sense? The two don't have to be the same, but you have to understand how accountants think. The challenge is accounting keeps shifting over time. I talked about the fact that I don't think it's the accountant's job to forecast the future and value assets. Well, guess what? Accounting has been overtaken by what is called broadly fair value accounting and accounting is trying to do exactly what I said it should not. And as we go through the financial statements, I'll talk about the problems that get created for the users of accounting statements because accountants try to do too much. So across the next few sessions, we're going to go through the financial statements and we're going to take a look at what accountants do right and what they can do better. And keep in mind that as we go through this, our end game is to ask the big questions about companies. I hope you found this session useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next session.